this class is going to serve as an orientation to the new uh, head nozzles that the like fire department is putting in service. So let's talk about uh, the reason for uh, this new technology. We have to first kind of have a little overview of modern fire behavior. Uh, the modern fire environment has changed substantially in recent decades, as most of you probably know. When we were dealing with uh, fires in the old days, right, most of the time we were dealing with small homes and big lots. Now we're starting to see the, the trend shift more towards much bigger square footage homes on smaller lots. In the old days, we had closed compartmentalized house layouts that were a rule. Uh, now we're starting to see much more open concept hose layouts, house layouts rather. Um, in the old days, we dealt with solid lumber, wood siding, uh, paper and fiberglass insulation, generally uh, more natural materials. Uh, nowadays, we're dealing more with engineered lightweight lumber, vinyl siding, and plastic and foam insulation. So more fuel and less ability for the structure to resist uh, the uh, the insult of fire against it, right? Uh, contents, all these generally natural materials, wood, cotton, wool, now synthetic materials and, and contents, right? Plastic, foam, uh, much bigger fuel loads. They burn more readily, higher BTU generation. Bottom line is modern structure fires reach flashover significantly faster than legacy fires. So firefighting, structural firefighting at least, is ultimately about combating heat, GPMs versus BTUs, right? We have to put more GPMs out than the BTUs that are being generated by the fire. The more effective our water placement is, the faster the fire goes out. Good nozzle technique is important. Our existing nozzle technology, we have our smooth bore nozzles, which are laminar flow with long reach but low coverage, right? It's a solid jet of water, has good reach, good penetrating capabilities, very predictable characteristics. We like them for structural firefighting, uh, but the coverage is minimal with these because it's a solid lug slug of water that just comes out straight, right? We have to play the uh, nozzle about the compartment in order to be able to coat it with, with water. Fog nozzles, um, when they're used in a fog setting, have high coverage, but we have low, low reach and the water droplets are very small, right? Um, the idea behind a fog nozzle is you have those um, small droplets of water which convert to steam more readily, works great in highly enclosed compartments, shipboard firefighting, uh, in more open compartments like we see in houses, it doesn't work very well at all. They also entrain significant amounts of air as well, which is a uh, bad thing for us. That's why when we use a fog nozzle or combination nozzle in a structure fire, we're taught to always keep it on a screen screen, right? The fluid dynamics behind these nozzles, uh, the smoothbore nozzle to the left, it, it's again, cannot have a, a diverging pattern because the water basically just funnels out into that tip. Combination nozzles, uh, you can't have an optimized geometric pattern or droplet size uh, just because of the uh, the way that the uh, the baffle is shaped, right? So it's, it's going to come out, but it's not necessarily, you can't really modify how you know, a combination nozzle really works. It, it's going to work the same regardless. The hen blade nozzle, uh, the new nozzles that we're putting in service, is a smoothbore nozzle. So if you look at the um, the tip here as it comes out, this is a smoothbore nozzle, right? It's got that 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 tapered solid stream. But what they've done is they've added this part here, which with a quick twist can take that solid stream pattern. And it can break it up into a, a horizontal, what they call a blade pattern to increase your, your coverage. Okay. That's how the uh the, the head blade nozzle works. Um they also have uh created a new style of uh shut off as well, which is a combination sort of of a, a ball shut off and a, a gate, uh, which allows for a much smoother um opening and closing of the of the the uh the bail, right? So these put together, it's a, it's a new kind of nozzle technology. Um, the hen nozzles that we're putting in service, not all of them are going to have the hen shut off. Uh, it was an economic thing uh, just because the these are kind of expensive and uh, we have the existing TFT uh, shut offs that are not very old. So some of the, the nozzles you guys are going to have are going to have the hen shut off. Some of them are going to have the, uh, the existing TFT shut off, but they, they function the same regardless. It's just that the new... Um, Hen bail or the new hen shut off has a little bit of a smoother bail action. You guys are going to note from that. So the nozzle pattern is changed with a simple quarter turn twist. If you turn a quarter turn to the right, you get a solid stream. Quarter turn to the left is a blade pattern. And you can see that being shown in the, the video here.
So it's not, there's no like, um, it's not, not like a fog nozzle where you have different um, degrees of, of, you know, pattern or anything. It's basically just kind of one or the other, either you're, you're in bleed or you're in, you're in smooth bore basically. Okay. Um, this video here is just going to show uh, a little demonstration of the uh, nozzles in a training setting. And this video here is a uh, video taken from a thermal imaging camera, which shows uh, the Hen 160 smooth bore versus just a, a standard 70 uh, smooth bore tip. So you can see there that the uh, hen uh, blade pattern was able to achieve suppression um, faster and with uh, lower um, water usage than the uh, the solid tip uh, seven eighths. Um, but you know, looking at that video, you can also see that the nozzle operator had to achieve much less movement um, with the nozzle than uh, with the hen blade versus the uh, the standard smooth bore. So that that's a uh, an important you know kind of uh, an advantage, especially when you're dealing with, um, you know, crews that we, we don't have the ability to, to continually practice this stuff because we're not seeing structure fires every day, right? So uh, simplifying that ability to to play, play the nozzle and achieve good water mapping is an advantage for us as a department. This uh, side by side just kind of shows you the uh, water distribution from the ceiling with your uh, standard solid stream uh, versus the uh, the the uh, blade pattern, so you can kind of see the uh, the increase in coverage that you get in the compartment with the uh, the blade pattern versus the smooth bore. When we twist the hen nozzle to the right. It is a solid stream nozzle. It's a smooth bore nozzle. It looks exactly the same as any other uh, straight or solid tip that you would have, right? This video shows you here. Um, the nozzle to the right is the hen. The nozzle to the left is is a uh, just a standard smooth bore. They are exactly equivalent. They're exactly the same. Uh, no difference. So you still have the ability to twist that to the right, and you still have your, uh, your uh, solid stream that you're used to. So... Applications. The blade pattern gives the advantage of increased water coverage in a compartment without the massive air and treatment of the fog screen. The air movement with the blade pattern is approximately equivalent to playing a straight stream in an O pattern. So if you take that combination nozzle, you put it into a straight stream and you, you uh, put it into an O pattern like we've always been taught, um, that's going to entrain about the same amount of air as the, the blade pattern. But the advantage of the blade pattern is that you get that more efficient water placement and you don't have to do as much physical movement as the nozzle operator because you're increasing the horizontal reach of that that stream so you don't have to play around as, as much you may have to do some up and down motion maybe maybe a little bit side to side but you don't have to do these big sweeping o patterns like, like we've always been taught uh to do it, it's it's a, a much uh, simpler operation for the nozzle operator to be able to, to cover that whole room so what effect does that have on the fire right the most efficient application of water um, we have to con contact four different areas as quickly as possible. We have to contact the fuel services, the stuff that's actually burning. We have to contact the unaffected fuel to keep it from burning. 
we have to contact the hot smoke because remember smoke is is fuel right so we have to cool down that hot gas layer to prevent that from igniting on us and then we also have to contact the hot surfaces inside the room as well because we want to get the walls uh, and ceiling wet as well right because that's going to um prevent the radiant heat um distribution inside that compartment right um, the advantage with the blade pattern is that it allows that wide coverage to contact as much of that compartment as possible. Um, but because it's still a, a solid stream, it's not a, a broken up into, into small droplets, we still maintain our forward velocity, uh, which maximizes the range of penetration when compared to a, a fog nozzle. So just a quick um, orientation to the nozzle itself. Um, we have to make sure that that the blade is oriented to the shutoff. So what we don't want to have happen is we don't want to have the blade oriented vertically. We want to always make sure the bleed is, is, is horizontal. So this blue triangle right here needs to be facing up at all times. Okay, this should not be upside down or side to side. You should always be basically looking straight on at this at this, this blue triangle. Okay. Um you can orient the shutoff. Or the bail, however you want. You know, I personally prefer to side on the bail. You know, some people like to keep it straight up. Some people wrap it around the bottom. It doesn't matter. You just need to swivel, um, the actual nozzle part to make sure that that blue triangle is facing up. Okay. The nozzles have a locking rotation, uh, or a rotation lock on here that you can flick. Uh, once you have it set to the 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 orientation that you want, you can actually flick that to lock it in place if you want. Um, and then if you want to change patterns, again, it's just a quarter turn to the left for bleed, quarter turn to the right for your for your tight or your your, uh, your solid pattern. And that's basically it for these nozzles. Uh, we are going to be putting these in service and uh, hopefully you guys are going to be able to take a look at them and uh, get some practical training on. Don't be afraid to get your hands on them because they're, they're pretty cool.